I would like to thank the World Affairs Conference, organized jointly by the students of Upper Canada College and Branksome Hall School, for giving me this opportunity to address you today. I feel greatly honored to be delivering the Lionel Gelber keynote address and greatly appreciate this chance to offer my perspective to the Syrian civil war and refugee crisis. It's been almost one year since our arrival in Toronto on December 22, 2014. And what a year it has been. Let me tell you a little bit about my hometown and how we Armenians ended up in Syria. Syria is located in the Middle East, east of Lebanon and south of Turkey and west of Iraq and Jordan. Here is a map of Syria where you can see where it is located. Syria was a country of fertile plains, high mountains and deserts, and a home to diverse ethnic and religious groups, including Armenians, Syrian Arabs, Greeks, and Kurds. In 2011, it had a population of, 20, of about 23 million, and today, the population is close to 18 million. Close to 5 million people escaped to other con countries to fled the war. 92% of the population are Muslims, 7.9% are Christians, and 0.1% are Jews. Arabic is the official language in Syria. Everyone who lives there speaks the language. However, minorities like Armenians, who were part of the 7.9% of Christians who lived there, were allowed to have their own schools where the students learned the Armenian language, the Armenian history, and practiced their religion freely. Education is compulsory and free for ages 6 to 11. Therefore, literacy rate in Syria is high, 86% for males and 74% for females. However, over the past four years, this would have changed as the educated people started leaving to go to other countries to escape the war. Before the current civil war, Syria was the country that openly accepted Armenian refugees when they arrived there in 1915, escaping the Armenian genocide in the Ottoman Empire. My grandparents arrived in Syria around that time my parents were born in Aleppo, the largest city in Syria. I was also born there in 1980. Never ever in my wildest dreams did I, did I think that the day will come and we will escape those who allowed us to practice our mother tongue and religion without any fear. The survivors of the 1915 Armenian genocide, their children, their grandchildren, established a successful community and lived safely in their adopted country. The natives were amazed at the resourcefulness and the tenacity of the Armenian people with whom they worked and became business partners.
We had a good life. Actually, it was a great life. The government allowed us to obtain free university education and become successful citizens. When the Armenian refugees arrived in Syria in 1915, the native Arabs didn't hesitate to shelter and support them. My husband remembers his grandfather telling him how he fled the Ottoman oppression. And now, after 100 years, we are going through the same torture. History is repeating itself. We were happy in Syria. But when the war started, everything changed. People changed. Schools and workplaces were shut down. Food when available, was outrageously expensive. Water and electricity supplies were cut off. Children were ordered to remain indoors, away from the windows. For example, while, I was, while we were in Aleppo, I wouldn't let my two children get close to a window. From the fear, that they might get hit by a shrapnel. And when the schools were open, I would take them to school. And many times, I didn't know if they would return home safely. Living with fear as parents is terrible. This is Aleppo, before the war. And this one is after the war. We couldn't live there anymore. We had to move to a safer place. The decision to leave was not immediate, nor was it easy. It took us almost two years to make the decision to leave. One of the hardest decisions we have made in our lives. We realized that there will not be a quick end to this war, and that our lives are more important than anything else. I want to show you some photos taken while we were in Aleppo. A view from our balcony. And the next picture is the same view after a bomb fell. The next picture is this is my daughter, Nanar, wearing layers. It was very cold everywhere during the war. Electricity was cut off. During the second winter of the Civil War, we bought a chimney. Although gas was scarce and very expensive, but we had no choice. The next picture shows uh, the building beside our place. It got hit by a shrapnel. We were at home. We were very scared. This was the last straw. This is uh, our church beside uh, my kids' school, and the next picture shows my children's school.
see how the windows of her classroom are blocked from the fear that the students might get hit by a shrapnel. And this is Kesab, an uh, ethnic Armenian town in northwestern Syria. It's located near the Turkish border. It was attacked in March 2014 by jihadists. Villagers, villagers were kidnapped and churches were burned. Uh, this is an old church built in uh, 900 in Kesab. It's called Saint Stepanos, where me and my husband got engaged. It was later badly damaged. In January 2014, we left everything behind and escaped to Lebanon. We took only six suitcases for the four of us. We left our house, our furniture, our cars, and my husband's shop behind. Imagine leaving your house, taking a suitcase, knowing you won't be back. Unthinkable. A family's worst nightmare. We were very scared. The road from Aleppo to Beirut was very dangerous. There were many snipers and checkpoints. It took us almost 24 hours to get to Lebanon. That is four times longer than it would normally take. In Lebanon, we lived in one bedroom apartment. Rent was very expensive. Finding work was very hard in a country with unemployment at 21%. The average wage is only $400 per month. Life in Lebanon was unbearable. The country is now home to 1.2 million Syrian refugees. They make up over 20% of Lebanon's population. My aunt and uncle, who live in Toronto, were kind enough to sponsor us with the Armenian Community Center. We filled out our applications and sent them to Canada in January 2014. Processing our applications, began in August 2014. We were called for an interview at the Canadian Embassy in Beirut in November 2014. We then completed the medical exams and arrived in Toronto on December 22, 2014. We were one of the first few families arriving as refugees in December 2014. I would like to personally thank the Honorable Chris Alexander for making it possible to me and my family to come to Canada.
We were very happy and excited to set foot in Toronto, where we finally felt safe. Transition wasn't easy, but was made tolerable with the kindness of the Canadian people. Although my aunt and uncle, our cousins, our new friends, tried their best to help us integrate into a new country, it was still difficult. Change was difficult. It was especially difficult for my husband. He used to be a business owner in Aleppo, and now he is working for someone else. This takes getting used to. For me, it was easier since I spoke English. As for my two kids, who are now seven and five, they got used to this environment easily, thanks to ARS, Armenian private school, where they started going to school immediately. The school board and the teachers took in our two children with so much tender, loving care. And all tuition was waived. As you all know how expensive private schools are. They are so happy. And now they feel that they have always lived here. They speak English fluently. And now they correct my English. <laughs> uh, this is my son Harut and my daughter Nanar in their school uniform. My parents arrived on December 10, 2015 on the first Government of Canada aircraft. It was an emotional moment, seeing them after three years of forced separation, it was so overwhelming. Maybe you saw me on TV, remember this photo, this is me hugging my mom. My husband's parents arrived on December 31st. 2015, and this is our family in our apartment in Willowdale. As a newcomer, of course, there were many challenges we have faced, and we will continue to face. And if we don't deal with them, we will not achieve what we want. As they say, the sky is the limit. Given the opportunities, I'm sure many of us will rise to the expectations of those who welcomed us to their country and opened their homes and hearts. My heart is full when I know that I can express my thoughts without reservation. When I know my opinion is listened to. When I know my voice counts. There are many things that we will learn all we need is a chance 
and opportunity. And in no time, we will be somebody again without losing our dignity. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't look behind and remember what we had. All is worthless if we are not safe. I'm extremely grateful for this opportunity. As they say, Canada is the land of opportunities, and we are going to make it. And we will not be a burden to Canadians, nor the government. Being a refugee in Canada is better than living in an environment where there is fear for life and uncertainty. Here is what I know for sure. We are very grateful for all those who assisted us to get here. And most of all, to the Canadian government, who opened their doors and allowed us to start yet again another new life. Without this program, we, we would have been one of those victims you see these days on television around the globe. Big shout out to all those who assisted, who got us here, including the Armenian Community Center. We are forever grateful. This is the worst refugee crisis since World War II. In my opinion, the government's commitment to bringing Syrian refugees is truly amazing. These refugees will become responsible citizens of this country. They need to learn English very quickly, find a place to live, have their kids enrolled in schools, and as importantly, they need to find jobs in order for them to become independent, to start becoming independent and self-sufficient individuals. Refugees are getting free language assessments and courses, and interim federal health coverages are being made available for all new arrivals by the Canadian government. Thank you. By sponsoring these refugees, the Canadian government is saving Syrian lives. In my opinion, this is much better than military intervention, which will only lead to civilians' death. There must be a political solution to this crisis. And here is what I've learned since I've been in Toronto. Canadians are the most generous people who are ready and willing to help. Unbelievable. I was asked what a regular Canadian citizen 
can do to help a newcomer? I would say a regular Canadian citizen can help a newcomer by helping them find jobs. And when they hire a newcomer, they can encourage other employers in their community to do the same. They can help newcomers build professional networks. They can help newcomers in their daily lives, such as filling out forms and applications. They can help newcomers by donating furniture, used cars, and mobile phones. These days, the common statement newcomers hear at a prospective job interviews is that they lack the Canadian experience. If the prospective employers just give a chance to these refugees and make it possible for them to gain the Canadian experience and prove that they can be successful and become contributing members to this welcoming and generous society. I will leave you with one parting thought. Canada is the best country to live in, and believe me, I know that. Again, thank you, Canada. Thank you, Canadians, for welcoming us into your society. We will make you proud.